Those were some really inspiring words from Minister of State Alvin Tan. To help us deep dive the global opportunity further, I'm here with the inimitable Peter Bithos, CEO of Seek Asia, who is also our title sponsor for this year. Peter, welcome back to the Tech in Asia conference. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, and thank you, Tech in Asia. We look forward to an exciting conference ahead. And I'm, you know, I've never ever uh, ceased to be impressed by Singapore and 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 the strategic way at which uh, the ministers, like Minister Tan, just uh, talks about trends in the region. It's it's, it's impressive. Absolutely, especially after this weekend's news. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody in Singapore, uh, certainly there was a vibrancy of activity to try and reconnect to the world. Absolutely. So let's uh, put this year's conference theme, Southeast Asia's global debut, into a little bit more perspective for our viewers at home. Peter, you've been in tech leadership, uh, tech leadership positions around APAC for 15 years now. So can you help put uh, this theme into the context a little bit more for us? Yeah. So for many of you living at home uh, and watching from home, it's an exciting time, obviously. But what I like to point to is that there's three themes that are somewhat related, but all converging all at the same time in Southeast Asia that make it probably the most exciting time, certainly since, since I've been here uh, for over a decade. So number one is obvious, the most obvious one is the COVID trends. And, and people talk about COVID as an accelerator. And on many dimensions, it is, right? And so, and there's no better industry that knows that intimately other than tech, right? So that's one trend. The second trend is, uh, second, for people that have been around the region for quite a while, We've seen it coming, but there's so, you know, there's so much media hype about, oh, Southeast Asia is all these unicorns and how exciting right now. But actually, for me and for many of uh, your viewers out there, it has been a long time coming. I, I, you know, many of us remember the days when it was just Grav getting started or just Gojek. And this is not like a flash in the pan. This has been 10 years of VC and hard tech startup stories and hard work in the making to build an ecosystem. And whether whether you supply services to them or you supply talent or you are part of that journey, the tech ecosystem here has been building for 10 or 15 years and it's exciting to see it flower. And the third at the very macro level, which is impacting both corporates as well as startups, as well as accelerated growth companies, is just the sheer amount of capital flow happening globally right now looking for a home. It's they're for good reasons in some ways, but actually in some ways it, it, it's not such a great trend. It has some very downsides to it. But nevertheless, there's a tremendous amount of capital looking for a home, looking for returns, and looking for growth. And that leads to Southeast Asia. And that's why you see all the SPACs, and that's why you see all the big rounds and the heady valuations. And whether or not it's overvalued or not, I don't know. But that is a macro trend affecting all of us uh, in good ways right now, but we'll see how that plays out over the next year or two. Peter, you're right. There is a ton of global capital coming to this region now. How can other tech and startup leaders capitalize upon this opportunity? Yeah, so there's actually, there's never been a better time to be a tech leader, I think, in this, uh, in this region. One, on the professional level, and two, on the personal level. So on the professional level, um, whether you work at a startup, whether you work at a, a growth uh, accelerating company or whether you work in a, in a tech platform that's radically reinvesting, the type of business cases and investments that you're able to attract now are, are truly transformational and scale. And so you can do things and act boldly at scale in an easier way than I think at any other time over the last 10 or 15 years in Southeast Asia. So be bold, think boldly, and lead boldly, and it's a really great time for that. And then on the personal level, all of that capital, which is inspiring bold thinking, is also creating great individual opportunities. Individual opportunities for executives, for leaders, and even for young tech aspiring entrepreneurs and young tech people, uh, executives looking for their first role. Um, tremendous amount of opportunities and a big talent gap, which I'm sure you'll want to talk about. Absolutely. So then those are the opportunities. Yeah. What are the challenges and downsides that tech leaders should stay aware of? Oh, well, having said it's the best uh, time to be a, a tech exec in, in Southeast Asia, which I do believe it's not without its challenges. Uh, the two biggest challenges I think we all face, uh, one is the obvious one, which is how do you lead a team 
remotely when you can't go to Jakarta anymore and see them. You can't business develop in Bangkok. You can't manage in Manila, right? So, uh, so you like the alliteration, yeah. So, uh, so, uh, but it it is hard. Look, I have been a CEO at Seek in Asia now for over a year. I still haven't met my team. I was recruited completely over Zoom. I manage and I lead a thousand people over Zoom. It's a very hard experience, right? One which we're getting used to, but if you want to be a differentiated leader, it's still very hard. The second thing is just the talent war that's going on. It's, it's, it's hyped, but I actually don't think it's overhyped because it's very real. Finding, attracting, retaining great talent is the single hardest thing that I do. I spend more hours in my week on attracting talent and keeping talent than any other topic. Maybe Indonesia would be the other one, right? So, but, uh, but, but that's, I, I spend a ton of time trying to uh, win that talent war and win it in a demonstrably differential way because the best teams, we're going to win no matter what. Okay, so talent is clearly one of the fastest changing and biggest topics for all companies right now. From Seek's perspective, maybe let's look at some of the data that y'all are seeing across the region. Can you share some of the biggest labor trends in terms of uh, market movement in terms of the labor market? Sure, sure. So first of all, for your viewers out there who may not, may not know, so we're the, we're the owners of Job Street and JobsDB in the region. We're a dot-com era uh, job marketplace. Uh, and the number one uh, leader in every market that we operate in uh, when it comes to job uh, matching. Now, what that has allowed us to do is accumulate a 20-year, two-decade linear set of market data on the job market in every single country in Southeast Asia. And I think, actually, as I've come in and learned about the company and learned about the data, it is, it is a better data set than I think any other company or government has on the labor market in Southeast Asia. It's astonishing. When you look at that two-decade trends, you see a couple of things uh, fundamentally happening. One is, uh, we talked at the beginning about COVID as an accelerator, absolutely is. What has happened over the last 18 to 24 months is the industries in every single country, the industry and functions that were growing have exploded from a growth perspective over the last 18 months. And secondly, most of the ones that were in decline fell off a cliff. Right, so, so the shrinking industries, now there are a few exceptions, like tourism and entertainment was growing strongly and it just went into reverse because of COVID for obvious reasons. But many of the sectors that were in structural decline have really accelerated. And so what you get as a result of that is a tremendous labor imbalance and talent imbalance. Tremendous amount of experience and I would say talented people on this side of the industry sector or eco economy and a lot of labor shortage on this side. And part of what our role is as leaders in companies and government in platforms like Seek is how do we figure out how to bridge that gap and, and help people move from over here to over here. Okay, so uh, a massive supply demand gap and the imbalance right there. What are some of the opportunities that candidates should stay aware of as they're trying to move themselves into that first tech role? Yeah, so there's, there's, that's a great question. And I, I get that question all the, all the time. And I get it from, from friends as well, right? So look, th look there's two things. And, and uh, unfortunately, I, I'm gonna, they, they all fall into the theme of an individual accountability, right? So you've asked the individual question. The first thing is, Companies are still, and governments are still catching up with this labor imbalance. They, we don't have processes or systems in place to, at scale, help bridge that balance. So for you, as an individual, you, you must invest in yourself. Um, uh, and and there, that is, it has to start with you. And so whether it's you, you want to invest in training yourself, you want to invest in, 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 in a slightly different experience set, um, you really have to act on your own advocacy because the systems and processes aren't going to help you at the same rate. And those that do will really find themselves in a much better position. That's the first thing. And the second thing is if you are wanting to take a jump to tech, say you're tuning in because you're interested in tech but not there yet, 
or you're thinking about changing industries. There is, it feels risky now, but the longer you wait, the larger the risk is. You must make change now to get experience. And sometimes that change involves going backwards and taking a step back or taking a lower salary or taking a risk on a team and a, and a, and a manager that you've never worked with before. Whatever that is, taking that step to get new experience is, is the second thing that I think every individual across Asia should be thinking about right now if they want to grow their career. Along the themes of taking a risk, presumably from the employer side, they would also need to take a risk and potentially hire a candidate that doesn't have like the most traditional tech background yeah. um, or is trying out a tech startup for the first time. Yeah, yeah. So the hardest thing, particularly for, you know, look, if you work at like Grab or Gojek, you're going to be able to attract talent as long as you have a good team that's the direct part of the team. Let's face it, that's not most companies, right? That's not probably most of your viewers, right? So, uh, so. Um, I would say two things, really. One is um, what we're trying to do is take a risk on younger talent that are looking for a step up opportunity. And when I say younger, I mean less experience, not necessarily age, right? So maybe you know, they may not have 10 years of tech. If you are looking for 10 years of tech, you know what? There might be a few thousand people who fit that category in Asia, in Southeast Asia, right? So. So you, you have to reframe your expectation of the experience set that you're, that you're going. And that's number one. And then number two, you have to find your voice, your own employee value proposition. Um, uh, you know, uh, what makes your company different? We talk about, for example, at Seek, what we are trying to do is help 500 million people in Asia help their career with 5 million companies. And we want people who are passionate about that mission. And do you want to help people? If you want to help people in their career, come join us. That's unique. No one else can, no one else can do what we do. So it's not about, oh, you know, we're just the sexiest tech company or tech platform, whatever, right? So you've got to find your voice and find your employee value proposition and, and, and your culture. Definitely. Um, OK, let's dig into this magical data set of yours. <laughs> what can you share about overall salary trends? Because you know this is a topic that keeps coming up. Yeah, yeah. So would you, would you want to know in general or for tech? For tech. For tech, OK. So for tech, I, and when I talk about salary here, I, I'm going to talk about total comp. Absolutely. Because yep. different companies you know, package in different ways. So first, first and foremost, from an employee perspective, uh, because of COVID, and because of, I think, all of the, uh, I would say, turbulence that has happened over the last uh, one to two years, unfortunately for companies, salary has become one of the top three most important things in Southeast Asia right now um, for tech and for all other functions. So salary used to be, uh, in 2019 and 2018, number four, five, or six on the rank order. It's now in the top three solidly. And so it is important, and it is a factor, and it is increasing rapidly in tech. And so you do need to understand what the benchmarks are, what your market is. If you are in Jakarta, that is a very different situation than if you were in Bangkok. And, uh, uh, and, and in Jakarta in particular, just a word, it is a crazy market right now for talent. It is so much capital going in so fast. If you're in tech in Jakarta, happy days for you. Um, uh, so if you're, if you're a person uh, looking to make a place, if you're looking for talent in Jakarta, good luck, right? So, um, uh, so, so salaries, you, you must, must step up to the plate. And that is good. If you're in HR, that is going to strain whatever rule set you have. And you need to, you need to rewrite your rules because they won't work. Uh, and the second thing, uh, before we all get too despondent that it's just a, there's just a, you know, a dog eat dog, you know, Machiavellian world is I mentioned it's the top three things, but guess what? The number one thing is still the number one thing from three years or four years ago. Every individual we ask in tech or not tech, the relationship and the ability to learn from their direct manager is the single most important thing. And so as, as someone building a team out there, um, lean in yourself, it is yourself that individuals are looking first and foremost to have a great fulfilling experience from.
And, uh, and so, so that's, I suppose, the good side of it. No, that's very positive. I mean, you take that and what you previously said about uh, employers having that call to action and that mission, and there's still a lot of control that employers can have in terms of creating a wonderful work environment and retaining talent. Absolutely, absolutely. And every company has to find their unique voice and their unique culture and their unique DNA and, and figure out how to construct a value proposition to that. So, yeah. Cool. Lots of positive news. It is, yeah. All right, Peter, thanks for painting such a dynamic picture for us. Um, you've certainly given us a lot to think about, a lot of food for thought as we kind of gear up for these next few days. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. And I'm so honored to, uh, to join you here today. It's always great to talk to you and talk to Tech in Asia and, and, and speak to some really big picture trends facing all of us. Yeah, we're really excited. So we hope you at home are as excited as we are. Remember, we're going to have two days of thought-provoking and inspiring stage content. And then we have a dedicated day of virtual networking on Thursday, where we'll have different roundtables and investor speed dating as well. We always want to thank our incredible sponsors, such as Seek Asia, for helping us to make this year's conference bigger and bolder than ever. All right, Peter, will you do the honors? Can you please open this year's conference? I know I feel like I should have a button or something like that. So, well, for everybody out there uh, all across Southeast Asia and beyond, uh, welcome. I, I suppose Maria and I would like to officially open the Tech in Asia conference for this year. And buckle up because there's a great list of speakers ahead. So sit back, grab your coffee, and enjoy.